Hey everybody, it's Booksy. Um, today I just want to walk you through the fractal basics. As I talk about fractals, a lot of people get really confused and either they, A, they don't understand what I'm seeing or what can be seen, or B, they just don't believe that it actually exists. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with our understanding of like, what is a fractal, right? And how do we um, see it in the context of a stock? And so as we go through today, I'm not going to focus on fractals as this geometric thing so much so, a geometric pattern, so much as I am going to focus on a linear pattern as we see it like a geometric linear pattern play out in a stock. So that way um, we're not spending too much time on like the mathematics of it. We're just going to focus on like the visual of it and then how it might look as we see it in a stock. So let's get started. So what is a fractal? So um, a fractal is basically getting from A to B. It's how we go from one point to another. And if this were a geometric fractal, we probably wouldn't have an arrow. We would just have like a line because it's just a, a geometric part, right? So a line segment can be a geometric part, um, as could like a curve or anything. In the stocks, we're going to talk about in terms of linear because we're, we're dealing with these playing out over time. And there are infinite possibilities for how you get from A to B. And these possibilities are really only bound by the time itself, right? And so maybe you have a day to get from A to B. You can chart a bunch of different courses. Um, but if you only had an hour to get from A to B, some of these courses may not play out exactly the same way. It might be a little more difficult. And then the stocks we're talking about impacting these lines right by either buying or selling um or shorting right and that's not something that you can just sort of so it's not as easy as just drawing a line it's it's like there, there has to be like algorithmically interpreted like this path would have to be interpreted this path um but a computer could do that pretty quickly and pretty easily so basically fratter uh, excuse me basically fractals are just patterns that repeat so you have A to B, and then you again, you have A to B. And if you saw this repeat, you would say that this right here from A to B is your fractal. Okay. And it's repeating twice. But fractals can also be scaled. They can be scaled vertically, horizontally, or both. And at this point, you might say, well, this one over here is significantly smaller than this one over here, how can they be the same fractal? And the fact is that a fractal, this is where we get to the math part, right? Um, it's relative to itself. So it could be scaled in parts or it could be scaled on the whole. But the way the, the way these things move, right? From this to this to this to this, right? As it goes across this pattern, um, it's relative and proportionate to the spaces around it. So it doesn't have to be uh, a one-to-one -one in order for it to be the same fractal. Fractals are scalable, and that's really important. Fractals also iterate and multiply on themselves. So in the first example, we saw A to B, just a straight line segment. And if we introduce a pattern variance, so you take A to B, and then A to B goes up, and then A to B goes down, and then A to B goes back sideways. And this is probably one you, you can find online. And I like this one. It's a simple example. Um, this pattern variance that's introduced can also be iterated on or replicated. And when you say iterated, you're just talking about repeated over and over and over again as you go through time and progress. Right. And so if you take each segment, right, and now you iterate again and you use the new A to B, which is this motion, you see this then you get a more complex pattern. And if you were to continue to do this, eventually uh, it becomes very difficult to sort of figure out where A and B actually start and end. And you kind of can lose track of it. And this is especially more difficult as it iterates even more. So now we've gone from this pattern to this pattern, and you have this overlapping segment right here, which appears to be, right, so now you might even say, like, this is actually the pattern, this area right here, and it's iterating 
But when we actually started, we had both bottoms as part of the pattern. And it makes it even more difficult because as these stretch and scale and turn, it becomes even harder to sort of recognize that like this is the same as this, right? But it's sideways and this is the same as this, even though the scale is completely different. And again, it has to do with the fact that you are squashing and stretching these things and scaling these things proportionate to the parts around it and to the speed at which it's, it's going. And you can even overlap what we would consider the typical cycle. So this right here, this blue section, is the same as this section right here. All I did was I took this section right here, this blue section, and I turned it up more. And then if you were to overlap those like this, you can see that this section right here, right, stays much the same. It looks the same. But then from there on, it's very different, right? And so when you're looking at a fractal, let's say over time, and we're going to get to this, of course, in a minute, um, you might think that you're here, right? Because basically, like you're looking at this fractal and you, you think you've mapped it and you might think you're here and that you're about to see this. And this is when we're talking about stocks. We're talking about a linear progression, but really you are here, right? And you're about to see this. And that can be very confusing. Because obviously this and this are very different, but this and this are the same. And it's because the fractal has overlapped itself. And so both this fractal and this one could be finishing right at the same time, but the pattern has already basically shifted to like this new fractal. So in stocks, fractal patterns are found in just price action. So for example, some typical price action you might see in a stock. And this reflects behavior or how and why the stock is traded. Right, what's going on on each of these moves? And these patterns often form larger patterns it's like a pendant. And this is something that a lot of us have seen and identified. And complex algorithms, um, complex algorithmic trading disguises these patterns. It makes it more and more difficult to see. So for example, if I wanted to take a section of this um, and alter it, it wouldn't actually be that difficult because even though we know what we're expecting to see, um, you can you know, manipulate this in a way that makes it kind of difficult to interpret right, what it is that you're seeing. And I'm going to break it by doing all this stuff, but I'm just showing you, for example, um, how simple it can be to sort of manipulate um, and show a pattern, right, a fractal pattern in a way that causes people to go, that's not the same thing, that they look completely different. And you can see that um, uh, here I am, a human being, right, uh, adjusting these things, okay, and with pretty much relative ease. You know, I can make these sort of look pretty different from one another. And especially if I start messing with the length that things take, the times that they take, right? The amplitude of things, um, the... And, you know, this is not a perfect example because it's obviously breaking as it goes. I think you get the idea here. Essentially, you know, what, what, what happens is that as you manipulate these patterns, um, you're, disguise, you're, you're changing expectations and you're making people think that they are, you know, not repeating. Now... That being said, some obviously patterns are disguised better than others. All right, but you're kind of, you get the point here, right? It's easier to disguise um, when 
you have more parts. And so people will start to believe that there is no pattern, right? Uh, and they'll say, there's, there's no pattern to this. It doesn't have one. You can't see it. And if you say you do, then you're just crazy. So they're often only discernible on major repetitions. And this is something that you see in things like the SPY or um, other longer term stocks, um, whether it be a Wyckoff accumulation schematic or um, really anything, you start seeing these repetitions. So let's say you saw this stock. This is just some made up stock over the course of 25 years. And you look at these and you say, well, every either every uh, every eight to nine years, you get this big drop. Right. And there's this accumulation that happens and it's happened ever since the stock was created. Everybody would look at this and say, yeah, there's major repetitions. But if the fractals iterate on multiple levels, um, one time can also inform us about the other time. So maybe in this section right here, when we're up high, right, we're not on these larger accumulations, we actually see the same thing playing out. And maybe if you were to zoom in even closer, all right, you might see even something more similar. And maybe it doesn't look exactly the same. Maybe it's more like a, uh, you know, irregular thing when you get up close. But the point is, is that the fractals um, are the same. And so one time, meaning like a shorter time span, can often inform a larger time span or vice versa. Um, and in both cases, you would look at this and say, well, this is a macro distribution, right, into an accumulation. And then this is a micro, a smaller accumulation, or excuse me, distribution into an accumulation. And so now we're starting to see that the fractal is actually giving us a narrative of how the stock is being traded. So back to this example, perhaps if we were to look closely, remember this was our fractal, our, our made up stock fractal. Maybe if we look closely, this head and shoulder is actually made up of this same fractal. And if this took place over the course of several months, Let's say this took place over the course of six months. This may only take place over the course of one of those six months, but it's the same fractal. And the reason this works is because these represent, represent behavioral patterns. This represent how the people who are trading the stock, namely those big institutions, are going to trade that stock. And so in this case, you've got an accumulation, aka a consolidation, right, that's occurring. Um, and here it's happening on a macro level, maybe over the course of a month. And then here it's happening on a micro level, maybe over the course of a week. And that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to talk about right now with this video. So I hope this is really helpful for you understanding how fractals can be used in the stocks that we look at day to day and how you can find them and start to interpret what you're seeing. Um, I'm going to do more about the behavioral interpretation with some uh, algorithmic graphing. But for now, um, well, algorithmic fractal, fractal graphing. Um, but for now, I just wanted to put this out there so that those of you who are interested can start to sort of get a better idea of what I'm talking about when I say that there is a repeating fractal in <clears throat> a stock. All right. I'll have a good one.